This video is sponsored by SOLIDWORKS Cloud Offer. Today, we're transforming SOLIDWORKS from a mere skill to a wealth building, career launching powerhouse. This isn't about making designs, it's about making money, earning promotions, and leveraging your expertise to ascend to new professional heights. We are obliterating boundaries, smashing expectations, and crafting a future where CAD isn't just your job, but your wow. golden ticket. What I'm talking about is how to use your SOLIDWORKS and skills in general as an edge to create a strong foothold for yourself and make at least the department dependent on you. So this is my advice on that because I've received a lot of questions to my emails and in the comment section. Strap in and prepare for liftoff. We're on a mission to CAD mastery and beyond. If you're ready, let's go. Being a boss and running my own business at the moment, I know that most of my problems are not even known to me. So when you ask me, why don't I hire a person to solve it for me? The issue that I have is I have to find out the problem first. Then I have to describe it to someone who can, then I can pass it on to them. But if someone shows up at my door and makes me aware of my problem and offers a solution, I'd be happy to consider them above others to get that role and solve that problem for me. And if they demand a price, that price will come to to my head as a frame of reference so if they ask for a hundred dollars i would say okay it's a problem that can be solved around 100 to 500 dollars max and if they ask for ten thousand dollars i will look for someone who can do it for six so it's very important the very first person that comes to you and makes you aware of your problems and offer a solution they can also define the frame of cost and that's what i'm trying to do in this video for you telling you how to leverage your solver skills whatever you have learned from me or anywhere else i'm going to teach you how to leverage that in your advantage and create a very strong foothold for yourself at work so how do we do that the first chapter is solidifying your edge and stance at work first thing you need is to have an edge you need to be better at something than everybody else in your department or better in the whole company you need to know your strength the strength that i'm preaching and giving you is solidworks or 3d modeling in general but if your skill or edge is happen to be something other than 3d skills so be it if it's really printing even better you need to have that edge and you need to know it once you know it then you have to look for small problems here and there that are inconveniences yet in your colleagues and peers and your superiors but it's not noticeable enough to pay attention to you need to find a way to bridge your skill and that newly defined problem and offer a solution together with your skill this is exactly what i did when i started as an intern in 2013 i was an intern for a couple of months then i became the project manager you can go check my linkedin i became the head of the department and people who were teaching me how to do my job when i joined the company were now underneath me i was their supervisor and i had to sign their holidays and just before i left the company after five years or so i was offered the cto position but i had to leave for a different reason and i got a better position in a different company in a different city but i did leverage my solver skills and i actually delivered on it i did not just made empty promises i promised hey you're doing this we can do it much faster and save much more time if you let me create a template for it this brings me to chapter two you need to become the go-to guy in your company in your department people should know you by your skill every time they hit a brick wall with solidworks they knew they had to come to me it's like hey do you have time to look at my model i want to do it like this but i don't know how or it doesn't work or i get an error or something like that and in those moments even your worst enemies at work have to come and ask you for a favor. Can I ask you for a favor? Imagine that moment where the colleague that doesn't like you had to put their head down and just try to be a little bit more polite and do some small talk with you just to get you to solve their problems. <laughs> because you can, because you are the go-to guy. It should not only be 3D modeling, it could be anything, right? Work on that, make sure you are on the path to show everyone, not by just going and telling them, hey, I'm the go-to guy at SolidWorks. I'm the go-to guy when you wanna work with 3D experience, you have to come to me. They have to see you deliver and deliver and deliver and give value and give value and solve a lot of problems here and there. And they decide for themselves, okay, next time I have a problem, I have to go to Jimmy. You got stuck in SolidWorks, just ask Jimmy. This is how 
now Jimmy becomes a more prominent part of the company and getting rid of Jimmy becomes less wise as time goes by. It brings us to the next chapter, chapter three, the unseen problems. How can Jimmy solve their problem? Because if your company is working with 3D Experience Platform or with SolidWorks, the chances are you are not the only user. Your other colleagues, they are not at zero level. They know something. If they are zero, more power to you, even better. Your job just got easier. But let's just assume they are intermediate. If they are intermediates, they just know how to solve their obvious problems. For example, if your company is making covers for iPhone, right, the obvious problem is to just design iPhone covers and make sure it fits, make sure all the criteria and parameters of your design is taken care of and is being paid attention to, right? But what's the less obvious problem here? The less obvious problem is next year, iPhone 15 is coming out and it's just slightly bigger or it's just slightly fatter. I don't know, whatever. The less obvious problem here is to create a template, let's just say in SolidWorks, that is equation based. So you can adjust your model for iPhone 14 in a matter of seconds into an iPhone cover that fits iPhone 15 perfectly. So you don't have to sit down and start from scratch. iPhone is just an example. I have the perfect example, which I used at work. We had to redesign 232 different models and each model would take us at least eight hours. But with the template I made, I spent about four or five hours, made that template and each model took me only 15 seconds. Look at how much time I was saving. And I made sure everybody who mattered above me and peers knew what value I brought to their table. Instead of 230 times eight hours, we spent 230 times 15 seconds. And the time we saved, that's the monetary value they company saved by hiring me and by the solution I brought to them. When they see that, the immediately the value to cost ratio of Aryan or you just rises enormously in their head. That's the direction we want to take. Now, what was that template? Let me show you. While I'm firing up SolidWorks, I am going to tell you what industry I was in, which a lot of you might know from my website. It was the medical device industry, and I was in charge of designing stents, heart valves, delivery devices for everything below the neck. And I have done so, and I have patents. You can just search my name, Aryan Falahi patent. You will see what I have done. And in the meantime, let me just show you. This is an stent, okay? This is a very uh, generic design of an stent. If you know, you know. If you don't know, you don't know. But for those of you who don't, let me tell you, these struts and these patterns are supposed to be cut from a tube uh, with a laser, which has a diameter of about 20 to 40 microns. And it's very sensitive and very delicate. We are talking in micromillimeters. It's a very, very fine product. And the pattern looks like this. What we have here, the distance between this line and this line is the thickness of the strut. The length of that is the length of the strut. Now, how many times you have this pattern repeated is the number of segments. There are so many parameters to this, but let's just say right now, if I click on this, maybe I see something. Um, right, so the thickness of this strut is 30, 300 microns or 0.3 millimeters. Let's just say 0.3 millimeters, we have the strut thickness and five millimeters of strut length. And now we want to create the next size in the table. And the next size should have a slightly thinner strut thickness of 0.25. Instead of sitting down and changing everything, and believe me, if you want to do it with hand, assume it's easy, it's not. Because if I change one, I have to go change the linear pattern that I have used and so on and so forth. But instead, because of the templates that I have already prepared, and you can see it here, it's the table of equations. I can go find the strut thickness, change it from 3 to 25. Now you can see what happens here. They got smaller and from 5 millimeters of length to 4. Now we are talking the next length done. This is an example. It's a simple example. Maybe I saved about half an hour of work, I would say, on this one. But the design I had, it was 8 hours. Now the next one, let's just save another half an hour for 25. We want to do 20. Done. I just saved another half an hour. So this is only one thing. Let's just assume we want to have the stents, which there are products, the stents that are called bare metal stents. That is just a stent from a metallic material, usually nitinol or stainless steel. But there are some drug coated stents, right? You need to know the surface area of your stent after cutting, after polishing and everything. These sharp edges that you see, they all get rounded. And so the area increases. So the amount of the drug 
you have to code the stand width is just usually the surface area times two or times three. So knowing the surface area is very important. I just did that again perfectly. If we want to calculate the surface area, let's just assume I have added the fillets for this example, but surface area, how do we measure that? We go to evaluate. We can measure the surface area. Boom. We have the area of 43 square millimeters. And now my boss says, what about the other one with a strut thickness of 0.2? This has 0.4. I'm like, just one second. And now I measure the surface, we, instead of 43, we have 21.9, right? This is another half an hour safe. Just imagine the impression you will leave on your superior. If you make them understand the time that is being saved, this huge, enormous time is purely because of your skill and the leverage you have. This is a practical example that I actually literally did use at work and got promoted to the head of the department. And what I did that on top, which is the next chapter is I convinced both the first company and the second company I worked for to go for a 3D printer. When I wanted to get the first 3D printer, when I was working as the head of department in my first company, we went for an Ultimaker 2, which was an FDM. Back in the days, there was not so perfect. Now it's much better. It took us a couple of months to convince the people who have to give us the budget to go for one. Hey, it will pay for itself in no time. It's a good investment. And finally, they did go for it and we started using it and we did save a lot of time and money on a lot of prototypes which we had to order externally wait four weeks get the parts oh they don't match okay revise it send it again get it in another two weeks oh one and a half months gone we just got two prototypes and when we got the 3d printer it was like bam 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 i get like two prototypes a day and i started creating an excel table of all the material we used to get those prototypes including all the scrap materials and how much it cost and it was a fraction of the cost so after i used the 3d printer a long enough and every time I kept track of what we printed how much time and how much money we saved I took that table once it paid for the whole printer and a little bit more back to my boss said look about six months ago you paid so much for the 3d printer now it has paid off and from now on it's just generating profit and it's not only about the money we have saved so many weeks so boom done so next time when I changed my company and went to the second company I didn't even bother going to them for the 3d printer I started creating an excel table and I just calculated calculated for them that this will pay for itself in less than six months. I went there, I got the budget immediately and got the 3D printer. And since I was new, people started coming to the room I was sitting in. They didn't know who Aryan is. So I could hear them like, who is this Aryan? And people would point at me and they would come to me and say, how did you get the 3D printer? We have been trying for years. They would never go for it. But they did because I went to them prepared with the table. And I'm telling you, 3D printer, just go for it. It's a blind bet and it works all the time. It's like a loophole in this logic. It will pay itself off. If your business has anything to do with manufacturing or doing prototyping, or if you're an R&D, you have to order some CNC parts every once in a while. Just get the 3D printer and try to solve the problem. Now, the last thing, the 3D experience platform, since they're the sponsor of this video, let me tell you how you can leverage what they have. Because if you are watching my videos, the chances are you are familiar with SolarWorks and you have worked with it. So you know what it is capable of and what are its shortcomings. One of the biggest shortcomings SolarWorks has, it comes to organic geometries. When you want to design an organic geometry, the best chance you have in SolarWorks is loft and surface loft, and it's already complicated enough. Many things can go wrong at all times. 3D experience, which is just like SolarWorks, made by SolarWorks. Actually, the SolarWorks cloud offer powered by the 3D experience platform contains the browser-based app called Xshape, which I have covered in two of my previous videos, this and this, and it allows you to work on a polygon-based environment and just get a sculptor tool, get a volume and form it and shape it into whatever you want. You don't have to use curves and dimensions. You can, which is the good thing, but it allows you to go for the geometries that you could not go as easy or at all in SolidWorks. If I had that when I was working at that company, I guarantee you, I will push them to go and get a license and let me and other people use it. For example, I was doing stents, but the delivery devices, it had to have an ergonomic geometry because the surgeon had to hold it in their hand. And I was spending hours working with love creating this and I was successful because I was good at it but it was not efficient if I had 3d experience platform I would use the loft process technique counted the time I have to put down and compare it with this new technique and again save time and again brag hey you bought one license of 3d experience platform for us and I saved three hours on this design today three hours tomorrow eight hours in two days from now and boom it paid for itself so as long as you convince the company to go
go for an investment that you recommend and you deliver on that and the investment pays itself off and it starts to generate profit, you're good. Don't be afraid to do this. You cannot go wrong. And if and if you do, so be it. So what? It doesn't matter. It doesn't kill you. And that's basically, I know some of you have a different mindset, but that's my mindset. And this is where I am right now. So go check it out. The link is solidworks.com forward slash cloud. I know I talked a lot and I'm sorry for that, but ever since I posted that video about the Fiverr guy and how much money you make, I got a lot of questions. If you go check the comments on that video or any other video I have, a lot of you wanted to know how you can start making money with SolarWorks. And most question is that, do you think it's a good time to start freelancing? And I thought maybe, okay, that video I uploaded maybe was misleading to some of you. I did not want you to start a profile and just be freelancers. I wanted to use your modeling skills, your SolarWorks, your 3D experience platform, your whatever skill you have for 3D modeling, different software, different 3D printer, and milk it. Use it as your leverage. Go find someone, ask questions, find their problems, solve their problems, and go to them with a solution, and then snatch them as the client and start charging money. And the more you do it, the more you realize how much you can price your work. But that's the way I recommend it. I don't recommend you to just create a profile on some freelance website and hope for the best. Maybe money comes in. No, don't do it like this. That's not my recommendation. I covered everything I wanted to share with you. If you have any questions, put it as the comment below this video and definitely make sure to check the 3D experience platform. SolidWorks.com forward slash cloud gives you access to this platform. I have talked about this and I cannot emphasize on this more. This is SolidWorks plus one. It gives you things you don't have in SolidWorks. Use it as a killer combo and now you're already ahead of that who is already good at SolidWorks. So if you have a competition at work and you add this X shape and 3DX platform to your skills, Boom, you just became closer to become that go-to guy instead of your coworker. Who doesn't want that? I know I do. Thank you very much for watching. And if you haven't subscribed to my channel, I think it's time to do so. I'm going to give you some good values from now on, as I have done in the past, in the past 12 years that I have been on YouTube on and off. Thanks for watching. I really appreciate it. See you soon.